Consider the sequence 3n plus 1 over n plus 2. This sequence converges to 3, and that's what we'll prove in today's lesson using the definition of the limit of a sequence. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing that definition, as well as some other related sequence proofs. Soon, we will prove some basic limit laws, which will make establishing this limit very straightforward. But for now, let's get some more practice with that pesky epsilon definition. To do these proofs, it's common practice to begin with scratch work. We know that we want to show the distance between 3n plus 1 divided by n plus 2, so the terms of our sequence, the distance between those and the alleged limit of 3, we want to show that this is less than epsilon. So it's typical that we would start with this and then work with this inequality in order to solve for n. And that would tell us how far in our sequence we need to go in order to guarantee the inequality that we want. Now, of course, this is what we want to show is true. So we would have to reverse our our scratch work. We start with this in our scratch work and see what condition we need to make this true. Then we take that condition and do everything in reverse for the actual proof. However, if we do it carefully, we actually don't need to do all this scratch work and then reversing the proof. So I'm going to start the proof now and we'll see how this works. We need to take an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And then over the course of this proof, we'll figure out what our big N value needs to equal. That's how far into our sequence we need to go, which typically depends on what epsilon equals. Now, once we find the right value for big N, we'll be able to say that for all terms of the sequence after the big nth term, everything that follows is going to be true. Now, we can start writing all this stuff, and that's going to help us figure out what big N is. So we'll start with that expression that represents the distance between the terms of our sequence and the alleged limit. So 3n plus 1 over n plus 2, term of our sequence, minus the alleged limit of 3. And now we'll work with this and see if we can figure out just how big our big N is going to need to be. An easy place to begin here is to combine the 3 into this fraction, so common denominators. To do that, we'll multiply 3 by n plus 2 over n plus 2, and that will give us this. Multiplying 3 by n plus 2 over n plus 2 gives us 3n plus 6 over n plus 2, and of course, this is being subtracted. Now remember, our goal is to show that this is going to be less than epsilon, so that's where we're headed, but let's keep simplifying this to see how we're going to make that true. In the numerator, we have 3n minus 3n. That cancels out. We have 1 minus positive 6. So that's minus 5. So now we've got the absolute value of minus 5 over n plus 2. The absolute value, of course, will get rid of that negative and n is a positive integer, so n plus 2 is a positive integer, so this is always positive. It's just 5 over n plus 2. Okay, we're already almost done. Remember that this little n is taken to be greater than big N. What big N is, we're not sure yet, but that's what we are about to figure out. Point is, little n is bigger than big N. So what would happen if we replaced little n, here in the denominator, with big N? Well, big N is smaller, so that would make the denominator smaller, which would make the whole fraction bigger, because a smaller denominator gives you a bigger fraction. So this would be less than replacing little n with big N in the denominator. So it's less than 5 divided by big N plus 2. Again, that's because little n is taken to be greater than big N, which really means we're looking at terms of the sequence past the big nth term. And at this step, we simply need to figure out what big N needs to be to make all of this equal epsilon. If this equals epsilon, then we are done. So it's just some simple algebra that's left for us to do here. We'll do this on the side. We want 5 divided by n plus 2, this guy here, to equal epsilon. So let's just solve for big N. Multiply big N plus 2 on both sides, and that will give us 5 equals epsilon times big N plus 2. 
Then we can divide both sides by epsilon. So five divided by epsilon equals big N plus two. And then subtract two from both sides to find that N equals negative two plus five over epsilon. Or I prefer to write it as five over epsilon minus two. Let's write it like that. That looks a little bit nicer. All right, that's our scratch work. I'll just go ahead and shrink that and stuff it in the corner here. That's what we needed to figure out, the value for big N. We just figured out that big N needs to be five over epsilon minus two. That's gonna make this proof work because now at this step, we've got that this is less than five over big N plus two. And we just figured out that big N should equal five over epsilon minus two. So this is five over epsilon minus two, that's big N, and then plus two. As you can see, this is all gonna cancel out to just give us epsilon because minus two plus two is zero. Five divided by five over epsilon is epsilon. So just as we manufactured it to do, it just cancels out and gives us positive epsilon and we're done. So we've shown for any positive epsilon, if we let big N equal five over epsilon minus two, then for any term of the sequence after the big nth term, we see that those terms of the sequence are less than epsilon away from three. Thus, by definition, our sequence converges to three. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions.